Bible verses that say who you are, what defines you, and why you matter. Bible verses that will remind you of your worth, your identity, and how God sees you, in case you forget sometimes. You are loved. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. But God, being rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We love because he first loved us. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. For we know, brothers and sisters loved by God, that he has chosen you. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. I am writing to you, dear children, because your sins have been forgiven on account of his name. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. Evening, morning, and noon I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. You have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You understand my thought from afar. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. By this will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Stand firm, then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. He will redeem my soul in peace from the battle which is against me, for they are many who strive with me. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Accept one another, then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. 
But if I go to the east, he is not there. If I go to the west, I do not find him. When he is at work in the north, I do not see him. When he turns to the south, I catch no glimpse of him. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. Indeed, there is no one on earth who is righteous, no one who does what is right and never sins. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. For as through the one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, even so through the obedience of the one the many will be made righteous. Not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends, for everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. So God created mankind in his own image, in the image of God he created them, male and female he created them. For you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, I know that full well. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. And in him you have been made complete, and he is the head over all rule and authority. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. But in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you, saying, This is the way, walk in it. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything is coming from us, but our sufficiency is from God. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. I have everything I need for a godly life. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of Him 
who called us by his own glory and goodness. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. For by his wounds you were healed. For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and love and discipline. It is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast, because they trust in you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. God has said, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. But you, Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts my head high. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Therefore I am now going to allure her. I will lead her into the wilderness and speak tenderly to her. I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you in righteousness and justice, in love and compassion. I will betroth you in faithfulness, and you will acknowledge the Lord. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. All a man's ways seem right to him, but the Lord weighs the heart. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear. You are more valuable than many sparrows. For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear. I will help you. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. 
I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into His image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Whoever claims to live in Him must live as Jesus did. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and His grace to me was not without effect. But He said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you for watching. God bless you.